The hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker from the Bronx. I am the hard knock rocker. It's the hard blood line. Now, when you was arrested, I guess I don't know what your initial charge was, but ultimately, you didn't get the typical uh, murder charge. So what were like? They arrested me on first degree premeditated murder. They said that by me going in the house and grabbing a weapon and coming back out, you uh, have one hundred dead seconds left on this call. If that was premeditated, however, I explained it. The guy wouldn't let me leave. They had told him that he had knocked me out and kept rushing me, but uh, you know they still charged me with premeditated murder. But they took me to trial. Uh, first degree premeditated murder. I fought it all the way, you know, by the grace of God. The jury seen the evidence, the people. I had people that were in the area at the time, different workers and um, 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 people that lived there who said that the big guy was beating on the little guy, wouldn't let him leave. Uh, they never seen um, uh, they never seen me as the aggressor. Um, all this played a part to painting the picture to, in the jury's eyes for them to see that this is this wasn't intentional, this wasn't something that I went over there and intended and planned or anything of that, of that, kind, or, of that sort. So, you know, ultimately, 60 seconds left on this call. They um, found me guilty on a lesser charge, which was manslaughter, and the judge gave me the maximum sentence of 11 years with 85%. I've been down five years and uh, a couple months now, and i got about three and a half years left. Uh, nope. It'll never be easy. How did your family react to this whole situation? Well, actually, man, and my family, my auntie, everybody in my family was, has always been there for me. They know me, first of all. They know me as who I am, and they know that ain't that wasn't me. That that that's not in my character or even in my my structure. My to do nothing like that intently or the malice and forethought to want to do that. You know what I mean? And like I said, man, at that time, something happened as far as mentally. I don't know if you ever heard the saying, uh, uh, they, you click or something like that, and you don't... I had no control at that time, not only with, in my life, but over my being, man, at, at that specific time, man. I really don't remember a lot of things that transpired. I, I, uh, a lot of things that was told was from the witnesses there, and I didn't even really remember half of the stuff, you know what I mean? They said I was knocked out. I don't remember that. Uh, I remember going up to the yard, uh, getting out the car, coming around, he coming to confront me and everything, and we started fighting. That's what I, all I remember. Co coming out the house, I, I don't even remember going, going in the house. There were so many things, man, at that time, and, uh, you know, but something, my family has always been there for me. Uh, his girlfriend, which is my auntie, she been there, she still here, uh, came to trial on my behalf. Everybody, you know, the whole, everybody was for me. They, you know, it wasn't like that, that they were against me or that they con condemned me or thought that I did that. Why would, you know, I had everything going, you know what I mean, for myself. I didn't build... I haven't been the person that I am all my life just to all of a sudden turn into a, a, a killer, you know what I mean? That ain't me, you know? However, you know, it's a greater, it was something that had to transpire, had to take place in my life. You know, this is just my own interpretation of it spiritually. God, you know, I guess he, he wanted to set me down and change me, you know? Sometimes things like that take place. That's why everybody has to um, really calculate their steps, man, and think. You know, if, if for a moment when you're not in your, your right mind, maybe you're under any type of drug, narcotic, alcohol, or pain, stress, you ain't in your right mind, and anything can happen. I don't care who it is. You could be a preacher, a teacher, a doctor, look. Any, when they when they say at the snap of a finger, it, something can take This they, reported call is from an inmate at a California correctional facility. That will change your life for the worse. It can happen. I don't care. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm living proof of that.
Now you've been in a California penitentiary now for five years, a little over five years. Yeah. What's it been like in a California prison? Something that was a major transition in your life. Uh, all right, first of all, the, I, I came through the L.A. County Jail. Uh, I, I, I never went under protective custody because I felt that if I'm going to go through this experience, I should go through it and learn, and so that I can learn from it. And being protected uh, in a set, uh, you know, uh, getting it, uh, going the easy route, uh, I guess you could say. Not that I'm a daredevil or nothing. It's that I wanted to learn. And the only way you can learn is hands-on. So I'd have been in, oh, my God, race, race riots, uh, physical altercations. Uh, I didn't see things that, uh, that I, I, I wrote about, and it's going to be on my, uh, my space. I don't, um, uh, I've been, you know, I've been, uh, this, is the, this is actually a, a curse, but it's a blessing that, that, that was disguised in the curse, you know, because I, I come to know who I am. I, I, I've come to know the true me, the essence of me, the strength that I possess the spiritualness, because I'm back to zero again. I was all, I, like I was saying, I was on my way stepping on a, a catapult that would have put me up on a high pedestal, and right before I re stepped on that catapult, I was brought to nothing. I was brought back down to zero. So, you know, God has just been rebuilding me from the inside out, man, and opening my eyes concerning everything. You know, a lot of people out there, they say they, you know, people come to jail and, and yeah, you say, you might speak like that now because you're in prison. Well, you know what? Uh, God get a, 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 he puts people in prison or put them in certain situations so that he can get our attention. You know, you know, I'd rather be in, um, being one of the ones that's saying that I'm learning from this experience than to come in here and leave the same way that I came in. And, you know, just by people who know me, they see the change in me. They know, and it's not no act, it's not nothing to say. You know, a, a lot of people don't, I, I don't really want to speak too religiously, you know, because everybody got the right to believe and do what they want. But, you know, um, I know God personally. I know him. He talks to me, and I'm not talking about no spook way. You know what I mean? Um, the times right now, we living in some times that, 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 that's been prophesied about, and if people don't know, they need to really get out there and uh, 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 really try to find out what's going on. Other than that, man, you know, it's a, like I said, it's this a blessing. This recorded call is from an inmate at a California correctional facility. It was a blessing disguised in the curse, you know, and uh, I see the blessing. Rockin' it, rockin' it, yes, he is rockin' it. T don't rockin' it, yes, he is.